So today I'm going to speak, um, this short talk is a little bit different from the first two talks. It's actually looking at breast cancer in young women from a surgical perspective. And uh, I will talk to you a little bit about what we can expect if you need surgery, whether, if, uh, whether you need mastectomy, reconstruction, or just um, a lumpectomy, a white local. Okay, can we have it in a slideshow form, please? Oh, okay. We have to wait a little while. Okay, great. Okay, so it is important to know why we why there is even the option of reconstruction. Because breast reconstruction has been shown to improve quality of life for women who need mastectomy. Because it has been shown that it helps the, the women to maintain their body image, to regain their confidence, and therefore facilitate their healing process. So a few important questions that we usually ask, does it affect survival? Does it conceal recurrences? So the important answer that everybody needs to know, to know is that no, it does not. Reconstruction does not affect survival. It will not conceal any recurrences if there are any. And it doesn't really delay adjuvant therapy because the wound, whatever you do, takes the same amount of time to heal. Okay, so how about adjuvant therapy? Does it affect reconstruction? It actually does in, uh, certain, in certain areas, but we'll go into that a bit later. So local figures have shown that in the group of patients who have had reconstruction after mastectomy, the local recurrence rate is 4% and the distant metastasis is 8%. And only 4% have a delay in um, the timing to adjuvant therapy. So I think these results are quite comparable to normal people who, who do not have reconstruction after mastectomy. So in particular for young women, we need to think about um, single-stage surgery for the women because they may need to return to their active lifestyles, they may need to return to their work, and also possible genetic testing and whether they need to consider surgery for the other breasts as well. And some of them may be young enough that they need to think about future parenting needs, sensory restoration of the breast and all that. So importantly, we, we want everybody to know that all these options are possible, all these can all these criteria can be met even if you are considering reconstruction. So I think that is a very powerful message to bring across because some women may feel that, oh no, I don't want reconstruction, you know, it's going to take me back by a few months to recover and all that. You know, I can't have a child after that. But all that is not true. There are many, many options nowadays that and there are many things that we can do for young women who need surgery for breast cancer. So, um, so this study, this is, the this is the biggest study that we have locally. We, um, this study showed that there was an increase in the breast reconstruction rate from 4% in 2001 to 18% in 2012. And I believe today, 2021, the rates are even higher than this. So immediate reconstruction will take the most of the reconstruction cases. Um, more and more people do immediate reconstruction now. We used to have a few uh, delayed reconstruction that we do last time, but I think nowadays we seldom see any cases of delayed breast reconstruction. And also nowadays, more and more uh, breast surgeons are willing to have nipple sparing mastectomy. So this really improves the aesthetic outcome of the reconstruction for the women. And also I believe that there is a uh, there is a lot of there's a lot in terms of sensory recovery if you keep the nipple as well. So autologous reconstruction, which is reconstruction using your own tissue, um, that is uh, by far much um, more um, popular than implant-based reconstruction. But um, do not dismiss implant-based reconstruction because it can be, you know, good for a certain type of women as well. So uh, local trends have showed that the median age 
for patients who go for breast reconstruction is 46, and that is uh, significantly lower than the median age of the uh, patient who gets diagnosed with breast cancer in Singapore. And most of the patients who have breast reconstruction have early stage breast cancer. So um, over the last maybe 10 years, there's been a paradigm shift. So instead of uh, just looking at total mastectomy and then reconstructing, um, people, breast surgeons, as well as patients, they are more willing to accept partial mastectomy. So previously, when breast surgeons needed to take out a bigger, bigger volume of breast tissue, so much so that we are not able to save the breast, nowadays, they can still take out part of the breast tissue and we can do a partial reconstruction. So in that sense, we are still saving the breast. So a lot of things we can do nowadays. And of course, there's oncoplastic surgery. Oncoplastic surgery is actually performed by the breast surgeons who are trained in this particular type of surgery. So they can do more and more breast conservation because they can, do, um, they can um, do adjunct procedures in order to save the breast, to conserve the breast, rather than to just offer total mastectomy to everybody. So there are many, many options for breast reconstruction. We won't go into that today. Um, you can see that basically they are divided into using implants, using autologous tissue, which is your own body tissue, and a combination of both. So, sorry, I skipped one. So implant-based reconstruction using implants, the advantages are that um, you know it is a shorter operation. There's no donor site mobility. You can just order the size you want. Of course, if you use your own, if you use your own tissue, if you use your own tissue, the results may be more natural. You can use your muscle and your skin from the back. You can use the lower abdomen. You can use the lower abdomen. Uh, next slide. In various ways. Okay, next slide. And of course. Um, for those patients who need to have the nipple excised, we can always do a nipple reconstruction, either at the time of the mastectomy or six months later. And, tat and nowadays, we can even offer the patients tattooing. And I even have a tattooist who can do a 3D tattoo that looks exactly like the real thing. So revisions may be part of the you know, uh, surgical program. So some patients will need revision surgery to make the breast more aesthetic in appearance, to improve the symmetry. So partial breast reconstruction, I'll just uh, explain to you a little bit. So previously, those patients who have lumpectomy and then they have radiotherapy after that, they may have a lot of deformity of the breast. But now we can actually put in a small piece of tissue, like for example, the, from the back or from the tummy, we can put in a small piece of tissue so that it fills up the cavity, the volume loss, and you will not get so much deformity after you go for radiation. So we can do all that. Of course, nowadays, we can also fat graft. I think a lot of you are familiar with fat grafting. We can fat graft to fill up the volume after radiation is done. So these are some of the... Sorry, it's a little bit fast. These are some of the examples. You see, for example, in, um, in the two pictures lower down, this patient obviously had a, uh, almost one quarter of the breast taken out, but we, we put a flap from the back in, and then she looks as if she didn't actually have a lumpectomy at all. So all these procedures nowadays can, can offer the patients a myriad of uh, options to suit their, their needs. So how about psychological or functional improvements in breast reconstruction? So I mentioned sensory re-innovation. So studies have shown that patients with re-innovated flaps used in breast reconstruction improve um, have improved sensation and earlier restoration of sensation to their breasts compared to those patients who do not have. And innovation of the flap used in breast reconstruction have been shown to improve the quality of life in patients who undergo such surgery. So this is one example to show you how we actually join the nerve to re-innovate the flap so that the patient can have a faster sensory innovation of the breast. So as I mentioned, oncoplastic surgery just now. Oncoplastic surgery, the word just means a combination of breast and plastic surgical techniques 
for the surgical treatment of breast cancer. So what it does is that it moves the remnant breast tissue so that we can reconstruct to at least form the breast mount, the curve, the contour of the breast. And so the aim of this is so that we can allow the breast surgeons to cut out a larger piece of tissue should they need to and to achieve better cosmesis. So like for example, um, therapeutic mammoplasty to move to uh, rotate and move the rest of the breast tissue to close in such a way that we return the breast shape back to the normal. And uh, another parenchymal mobilization is another way we move the breast tissue so that we return the, the breast curvature to the original. So factors, but not everybody can have this kind of surgery. So factors that will affect the choice of surgery would be how much tissue needs to be cut out, the size of the tumour, the size of the breast, the location, whether the patient can have radiation after that, and other factors like what the patient wants, whether there's clear margins that we can obtain. So in summary, there are many, many different um, options available for the patient who requires um, uh, breast resection as well as reconstruction and everything can be tailored to the patient and for the young women who has breast cancer needing surgery it is important for everybody to know that there are many options that can help restore them